Right. In the middle of the night. You know, I want to hear yeah. these it's things. I, I was, my door is always, I want to hear the footsteps, if she's going down or not. They have these devices today. It's called uh, mm. uh, the monitors, all kind mm -hmm. of monitors mm -hmm. that you can put if you really need. And, and you can hear yes. and and um, and uh, you know you hear everything they're breathing they're crying and everything you put it in every room if you want there's always you know good idea okay. yes think about this I mean if I keep my clothes the entire night clothes my older son he's walking he sometimes gets hungry at three o'clock four o'clock he goes to sleep and he will see my clothes door is closed I know that he's gonna think that we are doing something. <laughs> That's what I assume. That's why <laughs> if you try to keep this door open when no, I'm done, no. No, it's, it's a matter of, of getting <laughs> of getting used to something. If he's going to see yeah. that it's always closed, it doesn't matter when during the month, he's going to get used to the idea that it's usually closed. You don't have to open it to mm -hmm. what he thinks, what he doesn't think. Yeah, I open it. Yeah. I don't want to um, I'll tell you what, when I learned this law, so in, in Israel, they teach people, okay, the young couples, always to act like a woman and the, like the husband and wife are nida. Mm -hmm. Always mm -hmm. in front of the children. Not mm -hmm. sometimes you're available, so you're handing things right. to each other, mm -hmm. or you touch, or you go. Always show like you're nida, mm -hmm. so that they would not know, you know, what's happening when and what, because they're very smart. They don't stay two years old all the time, they grow. They grow up and they understand. But on another hand, they will think that we are cold parents to each no, other. No, 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 no. There's all kind of ways for a husband and wife to show their love through talking, through words. You can always say, oh, your, your, your father is the best. I love him very much. He's the greatest. Uh, he should tell you all kind of... They, it's, but it's, he it's cannot good. kiss me in front of the No, kids. no kissing. We don't talk about kissing. We're saying verbally. You can show. No, but it's and, not and also action. Yeah. See, you know, it's and good no, no, no. also to see for the, the kids how the husband loves the, 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 the father loves the mother. Sure. But it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be physical. Show no it, hugs. It doesn't have to be physical. No hugs? No hugs. It's, uh, the, 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 I, I don't say that it's not allowed, but people prefer not to do that. Uh, why? Because, again, there's all kind of other ways of showing affection to one another. And you have to learn how to show affection yeah. for one another. It doesn't have to be physical. It doesn't have to be physical. And they will learn, they will grow, and they will realize, and they will find out later on, you know, why were this? Uh, so now okay, when we get old, we can kiss each other, right? <laughs> <laughs> In front of the kids. Like, yeah, kids, kids ask questions. Sure. Mm -hmm. Talk kiss about it. Talk about like this. Talk about this. Really? You can speak about these issues with them. Yeah. If they're already asking you questions, yeah, yeah. you can talk about these things. You can tell them we don't, it's not appropriate to do it in public, we don't do it in front of people, mm -hmm. uh, you don't show off you know, all kind of stuff, and you talk about this thing, not the Dafka husband and wife. Right. Mm -hmm. no. general. general, yeah, you speak about these things. Um, when talking about bed, uh, separations between bed, if we're talking about separation, should be around 60 centimeters. What is 60 centimeters? <laughs> you already yeah. remember. Uh, the edge of the bed is usually around here, and you know these are the six. I cannot reach the other bed even if I sleep very wild during mm -hmm. the night, right? So basically, you know. But it, can the bed be together? I'm still far because I'm on a queen size, yeah. and he's on a smaller okay. bed. But they shouldn't touch. Separate. Why they shouldn't touch? Because. Again, it's easy to roll from one bed to another. You move in your bed, he might feel it also. But and it's a different level. Okay. A little bit. Uh, 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 nevertheless, the, the beds cannot be touched. I usually sleep because your arm length and arm length. About, yeah. So like your elbow at the, at the edge of your bed should be at the other bed? Can, okay. right. We do. Okay. <laughs> what about if you know, one sleeps on the bed and the other one sleeps on the floor? Oh. Okay. That's does it also have to be the six centimeters as well? Uh, you don't want to step on him when you get up from the other side. Or fall on him on the other side. 
it's better that it's a bit separated, I guess. It's a huge separation. Ah. It's a king bed. Okay. Now, a huge separation, meaning I sleep on, on the other side. She's it doesn't matter. It's like all the way that side. On the floor. You sleep on the floor? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gone there. <laughs> no, not all of them. <laughs> About 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 beds, I want to. Uh, no, sometimes they switch. Right. Yeah, sometimes some people decide. switch. What what's okay with no, not, what's not okay with switching? You're not allowed. So uh, we cannot do one night me, one night you. This we cannot do. Huh? You could do one month me, one month you. Yeah. The whole month. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes. Seriously. Meaning it's only two, two weeks. weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So this is possible. It's considered like her. Bag. Right. right. Mm -hmm. Whenever, uh, let's say, you take, let's say, you the king size bed, place. let's say, okay? Yeah, so he's not sleep. allowed to sit, <coughs> lay down, and, and, and sleep on your bed because it's called your bed. Right. Anything okay. that's yours is mm -hmm. special. Oh, you have your smells on, on your linens on, and everything. He takes, let's say, the pillow, he smells it, he, he gets uh, mm -hmm. whatever. And it upsets him, it frustrates him, it, it's not so easy on him. So he doesn't sleep, lay down and sit on your bed. You don't see it, lay down or sleep on his bed, especially in front of him. Once he see you in your bed, he's like, hmm, he probably wants to surprise me or something or whatever, whatever. <laughs> it starts to work very fast, it gets aroused very fast. So uh, that's, uh, they, they don't, they stay with their, as they, they don't uh, sleep on each Do you wear bed. anything special? Um, for, well, I'm talking about this soon. A woman mm. is not allowed to uh, uh, yeah, to too much attracting. And so better to wear something long, mm. you know, not to make it too hard on him, not too tight, not to see through, not to, you know, so it shouldn't be too hard on him. Um, um, a sofa. Mm -hmm. uh, sofa, a sleeper mm -hmm. uh, in the living room that you open for uh, sleeping, usually for guests, and during this day, let's say for your husband. So you're allowed to prepare the bed for him to mm -hmm. open it and everything. Uh, they some say not in front of him because it could be very mm -hmm. attracting uh, way of doing it. Uh, when it's opened and has linens and everything, it's called his bed. You're not allowed to sit, lay down, or sleep on, on that bed mm -hmm. in front of him. But when it's closed back to its own shape, it's, oh, it's a sofa, so it's for everybody. It's not mm -hmm. only it's not only his this way. You can sit there, and, and, and some other people can sit there. Not a problem. It's advised, it's not a must, it's advised to put different linens whenever you're nida, whenever you're not. Mm -hmm. Whenever you are not in that, especially during the seven days, they say to have white sheets so that if there's anything you can spot, you can see, or whatever. It's not a must, but you know, good thing. And uh, when you when you clean, you know, you put your nicest stuff, your your best linens, whatever you want. Uh, it's up to you. Uh, what uh, what are the things that you want to put there? This is regarding beds. Question? No. Okay. Next thing that it speaks here is. Um, sitting together in one bench. And what does it mean sitting together in one bench? Let's say we have a swing. What is the definition of, or how does a swing work? You push swing. You put, you sit together on one bench, mm -hmm. but this bench is not stable. You make a move and you make the swing move. He feels your move, you mm. feel his move, and and uh, it's not a good idea to sit together when the woman is kneeling down on this kind of a thing. Why? First, uh -uh. Way, first thing, it's a way of lovers to sit this way. Mm -hmm. sure. Second uh, thing is one is feeling the other too much. So it's not a good idea. He cannot push you and make you say because he's not allowed to feel you. You're not allowed to feel him. So uh, not doing this day. Okay, if it's a uh, swing. Swing. But if it's a regular A bench? regular bench. Uh, that like doesn't in the move. park, you go with the kids. Right, you can, you can sit together on one, just don't sit have something one on each thing. other. <laughs> some, some, you know, not so close to one another, that's fine. Mm. Uh, in this category, we talk also about uh, sitting in a car. Let's say you sit in a car. If you're next to the driver, so next to the driver, there's this separation, mm -hmm. 
anyway so you just have to be careful maybe not touch with the elbows or something but in the back seat usually the not, not every car is separations right and if two three four people are squeezing in so you have to be careful not to see the one uh, one on, on each other mm -hmm. right uh, so before you get second before you get into the car you know you calculate who sits next to if it's possible mm -hmm. but if you already end up sitting very next to one another Put your pocket book in between you. Put your, put your coat in between you. Something so that <laughs> <laughs> still he is gonna get excited. Ah, to be so close. Yeah, I know. But sometimes, hopefully, you know, outside the house and with other people, even though when they come back, they they're still, you know, it could be too hard on them when they come back home. When you go on the on on the train, don't hold the same pole. You know, don't lean on one another. Mm -hmm. These are things that we have to be careful. Uh, as well, um, if we're talking about um, uh, going away, vacationing, vacationing, people have to be careful. Sometimes you calculate, you know, when to go to vacation. Right. Uh, according to your timing, sometimes it works out. Sometimes it doesn't work out. Right. And <laughs> what to do? It's very hard. If it's possible that you could do it around your cycle, it's the best, of course. And for that, in order to do that, you need to write on a calendar, on a monthly base, exactly when you get your period every month. It's good also to write when you were able to make a check of Sekhara, when you went to Mekva, when is your reshot, um, we'll talk about this later, when you're supposed to get your period again, so that you organize, you know, you know, if you get it every 28 days, or every 30 days, or every 25 days, or once it comes this one, once it comes that one. one. And so, okay. it, if it's regular, it's good. What if, because of the stress, okay, <laughs> it came too early or too late or didn't come at all, and that's how we end up, you know, when you're vacationing or you're on a, it's very, very hard, especially yeah. when people go to, to a resort or, or, or these kind of places next to the beach, next to the ocean. Very, very hard. So, uh, I pity people who do that. Sometimes people do take pills mm -hmm. in order for them to regulate it just before uh, the, the, the vacation. So this may work out. Sometimes they do it and it still doesn't work out. So, um, as much as you can, it, it's not easy, you know. Um, you have to go to the hotel and, and you ask, they have two separate beds in, in every yeah. room, mm -hmm. so that's not a problem, yeah. this, this, this you can manage, this you can do, uh, but all the other things you have to be careful. Uh, um, uh, if people go in a park late at night, some say better not to because uh, naturally, you know, it's dark, nobody's there, it's, you know, you're all alone, naturally people like to get close to one another, so just uh, be careful uh, with this. Um, that's regarding uh, these benches and, and vacationing and stuff. Not to provoke on the husband in these days. Another chapter that we have here. Not to provoke. What do I mean by not to provoke? If you asked me before about clothing, if you have to go, let's say, uh, to a wedding, to somewhere. I don't say that women should look, God forbid, ugly. She shouldn't. Right. She, 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 she should look always nice and presentable to her husband. It's a mitzvah that a woman looks nice to her husband so he feels good, you know. But you're not going to put, you know, um, too open, too see-through, too short, too tight, too... Don't dress or undress in front of him. Um, as easy it's hard and, and it doesn't have to see you in this way and um, don't put too much perfume special perfume that he likes if you put, put perfume that he likes he goes back in time you know to uh, the last time and, and, and can, can, can make it very hard if woman knows how to sing sing to sing Mm -hmm. She cannot sing a solo in, in mm -hmm. front of him because he can get attracted to her. Mm -hmm. If she dances beautiful, okay, she cannot dance in front of him because he can get attracted. Or with him, of course, that's obviously not today, during these days, because she gets... Uh, she, uh, they, so, uh, these are the things that uh, we have to be careful. Uh, last time, you asked me about um, pouring wine. Uh, you asked me if they're allowed to drink, you're allowed to drink wine together. So, in the law, it says a woman should not pour her husband wine. 
during these days. Why? Because wine makes people feel happy, mm -hmm. high. And after one or two cups, he's not aware of what exactly made him happy. He just knows that it's his wife that gave him this wine. Mm -hmm. And he may come close to her. So they say a uh, woman, she can bring the wine to the table with a cup or goblets or whatever, but he pours it himself. You don't pour him. During, if, if you have to make a kiddush you know, every Lel Shabbat, no problem. You bring the wine and the cup to the table. But he is the one that pours the wine. Some Bukhayan families, I always ask the brides, some Bukhayan yeah. families, the women, for some reason, they, they do it. I don't know why they Kelly. do it. The killing. Uh, killing and, and, and when you're not available, it's so not appropriate when the people know. Mm -hmm. So when we are gathered together with the whole family. Okay. Involves, so what do you do? Is it allowed to do if I'm not? So you t you we have this in our family. Right. Kelly, especially Ben Zahar. Ben Zahar. <laughs> they think it's a... You know, has to do with Ben Zahar, I don't know why. So they always ask the Kelin to put it. Uh -huh. So I guess if it's in front of people and, and, and everybody's uh -huh. there, it's not only your husband. Yeah, I don't say if it's allowed, uh -huh. it could be easier. But if you talk to your husband and make it a husband thing, not a wife. The mm -hmm. grandfather, the, the most important figure in the house, he should do that, mm -hmm. you know. Well, what if this doesn't bother the husband? These little things, it doesn't attract him. What do you do? You so, know what I mean? Huh? It doesn't attract you. Know, they'll tell you. It doesn't bother me. He's okay with you. He's, I understand the question. We don't well knowing who would be bothered from that and right. who would not be bothered Just from that. Just a prevention that. overall. So, yeah. Yeah. But it doesn't make anything bad to the wine, right? Because I know no, the wine. No, it's not that you're not allowed to touch the wine. No, it's not that. It's not it's that. nothing to do it's with the wine. It's nothing to do with the wine. It's the, it's the knowing that you pour the wine. That's what it says in the book. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Wine or any kind of beverage, uh, alcoholic beverage, um, like uh, they made uh, in our house. My father was says, "Okay, you start from mother-in-law. She pours it, then a little bit from my sister-in-law, then the other one, then me. Wow. All four of us. It's a, it's a big hazuk. They say, it's do it." It's okay, we buy the line, we put it everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it's everybody, little it's not a Jewish law, though. I don't, I don't know where they came, they 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 came they with this. They're on their own law. They make I it. know. I guess they just make it enough for you guys it's not to feel left out. Yeah. No, it's the uh, same thing was with my mom's side, not my husband's side. I don't know where they have it from, but <laughs> um, this is regarding uh, wine. Next thing, it speaks here about water. Used to be that husband used to come from work, not always they used to have water in the faucets. Mm -hmm. So a woman was draw, would draw uh, water from the well. And as he comes from work, she would help she him pour. to clean himself before he gets into that. Sometimes even help him, let's say, take off his uh, shoes. shoes uh, his, 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 uh, his boots, his boots. <laughs> because of the mud and everything to help him not to make the house dirty and, and whatever and wash him and help him wash his feet or whatever whatever yeah, today we shit. don't do these things <laughs> and so uh, uh, but still it's not uh, recommended that woman pours the wine the, the water on her husband's hand or help him take a shower or stuff like that because you yeah, understand obviously that um, it brings a, a lot of affection. Uh, another thing that it says here, if God forbid one of the couple is not feeling well, what happens if one of them is sick? That's a good one. Okay? So, if it's a life-threatening situation, God forbid he's choke. You don't say, okay, I'm going to die, i to touch you. If it's a life-threatening yes. situation, yes. you have to do whatever you have to do. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about life-threatening situation. We're talking about regular thing. Let's say... A husband has some temperature. Flu. Okay? Mm -hmm. A typical husband, when he is sick, <laughs> he is like a baby. Mm -hmm. Okay? Give me this. I'm dying. I can't. Don't help me with Bring me that. Bring you can, of course, you should do whatever needs to be done to make him feel good. If it's a chicken soup that you can help him with and do, if it's bringing him another pillow, another this. A Bukharian, some, the, some of them, they like to take alcohol, rubbing alcohol and stuff. Mm. This you don't do when you're in Nida. There's other ways of lowering temperature because besides you know. rubbing alcohol. You can take Motrin, you can take Ilo, it's fine, it's mm -hmm. okay, it's going to do the same thing uh, also. 
if the woman is the one that's not feeling well, also he cannot touch her because he is the healthy one and even though you're not feeling well, you he's touching you. If he needs to touch your body, it's going to be very hard. It's not recommended that he's going to massage your body, that he's going to uh, touch and do all kind of stuff. It's not if you can call your mother if it's really need, uh, this help is needed uh, or uh, could be helpful. Mm, but he cannot do it. If it's really, really needed, it says, let's say the husband is a doctor and she, 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 she expects him to help her in this way. She's the only one around that, uh, whatever, whatever. So through clothes, he can touch and uh, let's say give an, uh, an injection through clothes, even not touching her body. That's what it says. But otherwise, um, uh, people have to be careful even in these things. Um, woman is allowed to go to... To, uh, to synagogue, let's say, to pray. Mm -hmm. She's allowed to hold a sitter. She's allowed to oh. pray. Mm -hmm. She's allowed. She's allowed to light candles. Some people back in time thought that woman is not allowed to light candles on Shabbat or to pray. She's allowed to do these things. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. Recommended, it say, not to not to go to a cemetery mm -hmm. during these days. Yeah. Also, to a pregnant woman, not to go to a cemetery. She's a big weekend there, and there's all kind of spirits there that could harm her. So better not to. Uh, better not to, it's not even a law that she shouldn't, better mm -hmm. not to. Um, otherwise, it is in Sefer Torah. It's Sefer Torah from far. Not, not <coughs> I heard you're not even allowed to look. So some people say uh, not to look. Uh, when they show the big Sefer Torah, not always you can see the letters. If right. you cannot see the letters and it's too far from you, it's not a problem. Mm -hmm. If you can see the letters, it's better you're going to pray from your seat. Mm -hmm. People shouldn't realize, of course. When you are Nida, when you are not Nida, you do all these things naturally, like we mentioned last time. Um, so these are the laws of um, of uh, uh, this. Uh, what about the story yeah. under under the hupa yeah. during the um, kudush? Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. What be, about this? Can you be there during the Nida? Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah. Why not? Yeah. You, oh, yeah. Okay. If you are Nida, you're allowed to be there. No problem. No problem. No problem. Mm -hmm. um, so basically. These fences, let's say you're in, in a vacation, okay? Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take the extreme. It's hard as it is. And if people sleep in one bed, and they touch, and they hug, and they kiss, what's going to prevent them? Mm -hmm. Nothing. So the Torah gave us this law, not only when you're vacation, not only when you feel this way and you feel that way, when you're young, when you're, young, when you're, when you're religious, when you're not. This law applying to everyone. I want to finish with one story, amazing story. It was this guy, totally, totally not religious, and he was uh, already getting old, and uh, he was uh, hospitalized, he wasn't feeling well. And the nurses, the doctors, the visitors, other people see that all his family, his children are religious. He's not religious at all, this guy. But his kids are, they coming, they kissing his hand, they ask for a bracha, they, they act like religious people, but this guy is not religious. So the one that was uh, laying down next to him tells him, what's the story? You totally don't look religious and look at your kids. He says, I want to tell you, uh, when we survived the war, World War II, I was an orphan and I came here and I didn't know anything about Judaism. And uh, I didn't care about it at all. When I was about to get married, I met this nice uh, young lady that also came from the camps. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want, as I, I proposed to her, she told me, only if you're keeping Ta'at HaMishpacha. And I didn't know it's Ta'at HaMishpacha. Ta'at HaMishpacha means family purity. And she herself didn't know what it is. Mm -hmm. And when they were about to get married, she went to the rabbi and she asked him, what is Ta'at HaMishpacha? And he told her, he says, where do you know this word from? He says, my mother, she was in the a, in a Holocaust, right? Before she died, she told me, promise me you're going to keep Talat Mishpacha. Before you get married, you have to go to a rabbi. Promise me you're going to keep family purity. She promised my her. She didn't even know what it is. And uh, all our life together, it was very weird because I was not religious. But she kept insisting that she wants to go to Mikvah, that she wants to get distant during, during these days. We loved each other very much, we cared for one another. You see our children, they are all, you know, are pure children that were born from keeping this loss of family purity. 
and they respect me and and i'm so happy that I, yes it was hard yes i was arguing with my wife with my wife i was fighting with her i was mad at her i was angry at her in the beginning but i see on the long term that it was just for my benefit i see my children how they respect me how they respect my wife i did my best deal ever he said so this is regarding this law let's hope and pray that we'll be able to uh, fulfill this mitzvah to, to, to the mm -hmm. fullest, to the best. Bezad Hashem, Hashem will protect us, and Bezad Hashem, only good days. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.